Hello members of the Master Race, welcome back. Today we're doing the $500 build as promised. This build is primarily for those who have been gaming on a console for a very long time and want something even better and something that is upgradable to better components in the future. It's also for those who want a great budget build and the best price to performance ratio. So if you're here for that, subscribe because there are going to be a lot more videos coming. This build in particular is suitable for running most modern games at 1080p, 60 FPS, medium to high settings. It provides a little versatility as well. You can stream you can watch movies you can record and export videos with this it's uh, powerful enough to do that at the time of making this video the price adds up to about 472 dollars on pc part picker and about 476 dollars on amazon if you get everything there make sure to check the current pricing in the description down below if you're watching this video somewhere after february now let's begin in my previous video a user by the name of rattlehead suggested this cpu and this thing is a beast it's the cheapest intel hyper threaded processor at a price of only $61, this thing is just amazing for, for the value it actually provides. You have the benchmarks right there in front of you. If you can see, this thing is just crushing everything. There are processors like the i3-6100 that cost like twice as much, but they offer very, very similar performance. I highly, highly recommend this processor. I'm surprised at how good it actually performs. Just go get it. Just go and get it. Just go and get it. So just do it! Now, as far as motherboards are concerned, there's a cheaper one, which is the MSI Gaming H110. It's a pretty good motherboard. It's going to do the job just fine. It supports everything that this PC is going to need. However, it only has two RAM slots. So uh, if you want to buy immediately like two times four, and in the future you want to upgrade, you won't be able to do it unless you sell the old RAM and just buy two times eight gigabytes, which should, yeah, of course, it's gonna work. However, the second suggestion I have the, is the MSI Pro B250. This one has four slots. All, they both support DDR4 memory. This one also has M2 slots. Both motherboards are going to do the job just fine. It's up to you. I think both of them. The first one does fit in the budget. I, I think the second one is as well. So it's up to you with these. Both are micro ATX motherboards. Moving on to the GPU, we have the Zotac GTX 1050. It's got two gigabytes of memory, but I had a two gigabyte card before. I had a 770, which I think performance wise is worse than this one. And I could play GTA 5 on nearly all highest settings. Of course, I suggest you just be smart when it comes to settings. Turn off HBAO, turn off anti-aliasing. You're lucky if a game has that memory counter down there. It's going to give you a fair assessment of what's game going to be like performance wise. It's not always that reliable. Make sure your game doesn't use more than two gigabytes or it's just not going to work as well there's the benchmarks here on the right you can pause the video if you need to check them out the pentium processor that i chose is not going to be bottlenecking this too you don't have to worry about that it's a very decent card with a very decent price it's around 109 dollars currently i highly recommend this card now moving on to memory if you have a ddr3 board already go with g skill rip jaws x it's it has lower latencies than ddr4 it's very good memory but however since both motherboards are recommended are ddr4 the the Corsair Vengeance LPX comes at a price of $54 for 8 gigabytes, and 8 gigabytes is going to be enough. For gaming, really, it is. Unless you're doing extensive video editing and stuff like that, you're not going to need any more memory. Hell, even this video was made on 8 gigabytes of memory. So like I said, DDR3, go with G-Skill. DDR4, go with Corsair. G-Skill is around $10 more expensive. Like, the price goes up and goes down in a matter of weeks. I don't know how this is happening, but that's just PC gaming for you, unfortunately. Moving on to storage, we have both an SSD and a hard drive in a $500 build. I haven't seen a lot of suggestions like these, but still I managed to fit it in the budget. However, the SSD is a 120 gigabyte. So install the operating system on it and maybe one game that you that you play all the time and install everything else on the hard drive. The SSD in question is a SanDisk Plus. It's only 120 gigabytes, but for a price of $44, it's a very, very good deal. Now have in mind, it's not as fast as Samsung or Kingston would be, but still it's gonna do an amazing job. The hard drive is the Western Digital Caviar Blue. It has one terabyte it has two year warranty unfortunately uh if you have the money get the caviar black version it should be around 20 dollars more expensive likewise there is a 240 gigabyte version of the ssd for only 25 dollars more but they're both reliable and they both fit within the budget after all this now the last components we have left are the case and the power supply the case i decided to go with this time is the deep cool tesseract sw now i usually recommend the nzxt but apparently 
it's $20 or more expensive. If you can spare it, then get that one instead. This is a mid tower case, which means you will be able to fit a motherboard of any size in here. The only thing that you can't fit inside this case are the graphics cards that go over 310 millimeters in size. And the only ones that do go over that size are the top of the line Nvidia and AMD cards like the 1070, 1080 Titan. But since by themselves, they cost even more than this entire build, I don't think you'll have a problem. There are two fans included in this case. One is in front, one is in the back. The airflow is going to be very good and the fans are not noisy. And in the end, we have the power supply. The EVGA 500 watt power supply is going to be more than enough for this build. For the sake of giving you headroom to upgrade your PC later on, 500 watts is going to be enough. Just don't go too crazy with the upgrades, all right? $39 is extremely cheap for a power supply like this. I wish I saw something like this sooner, but hey, what you gonna do? With that, I conclude today's video. If you got any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I will respond. If this video helped you in any way, please leave a like. I'm in the process of making another gaming build, so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you like to. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you very much for watching.